if, if I'm conducting assessment in a collaborative fashion and providing ongoing feedback, this lends itself to a number of specific interventions that will follow. I need to help my client learn to put the brakes on, to notice, to interrupt, to collect. I need them to use frontal lobe activity, metacognitive skills. In fact, one of the things I do regularly in therapy is I ask clients the following question. I say to them, let me ask you something a little bit different, a bit unusual. Do you ever find yourself out there in your day-to-day -day experience asking yourself the questions that we ask each other right here? That's a very clever question. Do you ever find yourself out there in your day-to-day -day experience asking yourself the questions that we ask each other right here? What am I asking? I'm saying, I am the therapist modeling for you a style of thinking. And the goal of therapy is to have you take my voice with you to internalize the process. So I need them to ask these critical questions and then to implement the appropriate responses. How can I, quote unquote, put the brakes on? Can I tell ahead of time that this is a high risk situation? If I lapse, how do I make sure the lapse doesn't escalate into relapse? What are the kind of cue reminders? How, how do I view lapses as learning opportunities rather than as cashing in? Once an alcoholic, always not. What difference does it make? How do I avoid that kind of fatalistic thinking that exacerbates? How do I make sure that my urges, my cravings, my emotions do not hijack my behavior and my frontal lobe? In the Roadmap to Resilience, I have a whole section there on how to talk back to your amygdala. How to, in some sense, have emotion regulation. How do I teach clients to accept and tolerate urges and cravings? How do I get them to procrastinate their urges and cravings? What are the ways in which they can learn to cope with these withdrawal symptoms of the anxiety, the irritability, the sleeplessness? How do I teach them a variety of relapse prevention strategies? And most importantly, how do I build a life worth living? How do I get them to balance their life? To think that they can have the kinds of joys and achieve their own personal objectives without having to depend on substance abuse as a way to self-medicate or to seek additional highs. What am I doing? I'm trying to demonstrate for you, challenge you to think about ways in which the assessment process can lend itself to interventions.